Well, it has been 9 months since the last Naruto recap video. I may or may not have forgotten about the series, but late is better than never. So here I am today, we are going to cover the Chunin exam arc, aka my favourite arc of Naruto in this episode. This video is going to cover part 1 of the Chunin exam arc, which ranges from episode 20 to 51 and the manga chapter 34 to 89. There's a lot of content to cover, so we are for an otaku, smash my intro fam! The tuning up begins with Team 7 returning to Konoha after completing the Land of Wave mission. In episode 20, Konoha Maru introduced two of his friends, Udon and Mugi, to Naruto and the audience. But as soon as they were introduced, they ran into some trouble and it ended up with Konoha Maru being threatened by a shinobi of Sangakuren, Kankoro. He is part of the three Sun siblings, which also include Tamari and Gara. The main antagonist of Dark. Sasuke came and solved the issue cause you know, Naruto is still ass at this point. The episode ended with Hokage announcing the tuning exam in front of all the journeys. Team Dozo was introduced in the foreign episode. We also see the debut of a large amount of new characters like Team Guy which consists of Tenten, Nenji, Egotistic dipshit of this arc, and my boy Rock Lee, the best character of the arc. This episode ended with Rock Lee confessing to Sakura but getting rejected by her. However, he did redeem himself by stopping the attack from both Sasuke and Koketsu. Look at Rock Lee man, he's so inspirational. In episode 22, Rock Lee basically whooped Sasuke's elitist ass with only Taijutsu, aka martial art. Man Sasuke, you ain't shit just cause you got Sharingan. It doesn't mean you won't get wrecked by the beautiful wild green beast of Konoha. Guy Sensen came and dispatched both of them by the end of episode 22. Capital, aka Oscar winning actor, made his debut in the following episode. The first stage of the tuning exam begins with a written assessment hosted by Ibiki, aka the head of investigation and torture of Konoha. The exam was extremely hard and the only way to pass it is by cheating, hence we got a series of really interesting methods to cheat, which we couldn't use in real life. The exam ended with Naruto failing to answer any question, but he is brave enough to attempt them. The examiner passed it all the students who were brave enough to stay and attempt the final question, and that includes Naruto. The next two episodes break down the rule for the second exam that is set in the Forest of Death. Anko, the examiner, gave each team a scroll, either heaven or hell. In order to pass the exam, each team needs to gather two different scrolls and deliver to the middle of the forest where the tower is and advance to the second stage of the tuning exam. In episode 28, Sasuke beat some gaining from Anagaku and then we were introduced to Shane in aka Orochimaru. Orochimaru was whooping both Sasuke and Naruto's ass. Sasuke wanted to give him the scroll to save the team, but Naruto refused to do so. Sasuke, he's a f***ing shorter cord. A scroll ain't gonna do nothing. Naruto tapped it into the Night Tail Chakula and saved a scared Sasuke from Orochimaru's snake attack. It was an awesome moment where Naruto reminds Sasuke what he said before. <laughs> Naruto's night tail chakra was blocked by Orochimaru's seal zizu and he knocked him out. Sakura encouraged Sasuke to fight back, then he activated his Sharingan. The battle was intense and Sasuke finished him off with Kaodon Ryuka no zizu. But that was not Orochimaru's full power, he pulled the skin off and then by Sasuke's neck, giving him the cursed seal. 
Looking back at the scene, it was really scary and it gave me nightmare of getting bitten by a snake. The episode ended with Uncle failing to capture Orochimaru. In episode 31, Sakura was looking after the wound Naruto and Sasuke, but their company got spotted by Team Donzo. Lee came in just in time to protect Sakura. Battle between Lee and Donzo broke out. He used his front letters to finish Donzo off, but Donzo was saved by Zaku. Lee was exhausted, Donzo attacked with a unique sound lenses and it caught Lee by surprise, which resulted in incapitating Lee. In the next episode, Lee was unconscious, leaving Sakura to protect everyone. King caught her head and insulted the crap out of her, saying Sakura cares too much about her appearance. Sakura then blossomed and slashed her hair using a kunai, freeing herself. Mina. That was probably the best moment for Sakura so far in the show, but recently I have came across a meme that kinda ruined her moment. Lol. Sakura ended up fighting a much stronger Zaku, but it was no use. Just when Zaku was about to finish Sakura off, Inu and Team 7 came in to rescue her after a nice flashback. Team 10's individual power is way weaker than Team Donzo, but their awesome teamwork as a unit managed to pull up an even fight, but eventually Team Donzo defeated them. Team Nenji arrives and at the same time Sasta wakes up with the curse still activated. He absolutely annihilates Zaku, dislocating his arm. Sakura embraced Sasuke to stop him and Donzo retreated with his teammate and left the scroll for Team 7. In the following episode, we get to witness a small portion of Gaara's true power as he mercilessly kills a Amagaku again. Team Gaara reaches the tower first in a record-breaking fashion in one hour and a half. Team 7 recovered and Naruto was about to forge a copy of the scroll to pass the exam, but he was stopped by Kabuto, as when you open the scroll you will become unconscious until the end of the exam. As they approached the middle of the tower, an Ame Gaining hit them with a Kron attack. Eventually, Naruto defeats him with a more powerful Shadow Kron Jutsu and obtained the last scroll they needed. We finished the episode off with Team Seven reaching the middle of the tower while Kabuto revealing his true identity as Orochimaru's spy. In episode 37, seven teams passed the second stage of the exam and made it to the tower. There were Team Seven. Team 10, Team 8, Team Guy, the Free Sun siblings, Team Kabuto, and Team Dozo. Then the third Hokage announced the beginning of the tournament. The tournament begins with Sasuke vs Yorai, a teammate of Kabuto. In the very same episode, Kabuto dropped out as he feared that his inner cell might come out. Sasuke was struggling a lot as the cursed CEO caused intense pain. On top of that, his opponent, Yorai, has the ability to absorb chakra, putting Sasuke in a huge disadvantage. But he came back clutch with the Chishi Randan lion combo to end the match. Kakashi took Sasuke away, Orochimaru came out of nowhere and started to approach Sasuke. Kakashi saw that and he threatened him with Chidori. Orochimaru took that threat lightly and exited. The next tournament match was between Shino and Zaku. Shino quite easily dispatched Zaku as he blocks off the hole on Zaku's arm with incense. It was quite creepy when I first saw that scene. At the same time, I lowkey think he was a dark horse in the tournament. In the beginning of episode 41, we saw Kankuro easily defeat Misomi in the tournament. The following match is between two female shinobis, Sakura and Ino. Flashback of their childhood occur and they both recognize each other as a true opponent. Sing it! 
As the battle continues, both of them run out Chakula. Ino tries to end the match by using mind body switch technique and makes Sakura forfeit the match, but Naruto screams at Sakura and woke her in herself up, who forced Ino out of her body. The match ended up with both Shinobi knocking each other out, resulting in both being eliminated from the tournament. The next match was between Tenten and Timari. Tenten is a solid shinobi, but Timari is like the kryptonite of Superman to her. Her win ninjas was simply too much for Tenten to handle. The battle between Shikamaru and Kin is really good, where we get to witness how smart Shikamaru is. He extends his shadow imitation technique with Kin's wire and knock her out against the wall. Man, Shikamaru is a G. Naruto against Kiba is probably one of the best matches so far. Naruto found it really difficult to match the flawless teamwork between Kiba and Akahamaru. Kiba's special pale and Gatsuga proved too much for Naruto to handle. However, Naruto didn't let that stop him. He came back with several surprise attacks like camouflaging as Akahamaru and farting on over smell sensitive Kiba's nose. This allows Naruto to catch Kiba off guard and he successfully landed his new move, Uzumaki Rendan, against him and won the match. <laughs> The match is between Hinata and Nenji. We learn that Nenji is from the same family as Hinata, the Hyuga clan. We saw Hinata's passive, introvert nature, but we also learned that she does not give up easily. The battle ended with Nenji completely disarming her and blocking her chakra with Jugen. Hinata enraged Nenji when she told him he has been too fixated by destiny. Nenji defeated Hinata and just when he was about to deliver the final blow, four Junin, including Kakashi and Gai stopped him. Naruto was absolutely enraged and he swore he would avenge for her. Personally, when I first saw Hinata, I don't like her character at all because she is just seems so useless. But I started to change my mind after this episode. The next three episodes are the definition of hype, and it is by far the best battle in the series so far. The showdown between Gaara and Lee was absolutely insane. Initially, Lee's attack was not fast enough to avoid Gaara's sun shield, so Guy Sensei told Lee to unleash the weight. I low key dropped my draw when Lee dropped the weight. <laughs> Lee then activate his first 8 gear and landed front lotus on Gaara. But that was just a decoy. Then Lee opens his second and third gear while smashing the crap out of Gaara. At the same time, we get to witness Lee's determination to become a strong ninja with only Taijus in the flashback. In episode 50, Lee opens the 4th and 5th gate. He was way too fast for Gaara's land to protect him, and Lee was absolutely being Gaara's ass. He landed his final attack with reverse lotus. Boy, I was wet when I saw that, but no homo. Somehow Gaara managed to survive this and Lee has run out of chakra due to the side effect of opening the 5th gate. Gaara used his sign and crushed it Lee's hand and leg. By the end of the episode, a guy sensing came and rescued Lee. Dorso easily dispatched Choji in the next battle. Hence, Night Gaining has qualified for the next stage of the tuning exam and they have 1 month to train. In the meantime, Kabuto tried to keep Nasasuke but he was stopped by Kakashi. Naruto wants Kakashi Sensen to train him, but he told Naruto that he will train Sasuke instead. He will let another journey in Ibisu to train Naruto instead. And that concludes the first part of the tuning exam arc. Personally, this is my favorite Naruto story arc, and the best match has to be Lee against Gaara. It was so good, man. I was speechless. Since then, I've fallen in love with Lee as a character. And we are done. This is quite a long video and I think it is a good time to end here. You will stay safe and stay blessed. I'm out.